Michael Meadows is head of planning at British Land. And the company has three office-led campuses in central London, Broadgate, Regent's Place and Paddington, as well as a number of standalone buildings. Its retail portfolio is largely outside London. It's made up of retail parks and shopping centres. But increasingly, the company is focusing on mixed use, as at uh, the 53-acre Canada Water Development, which received planning permission earlier this year. Now, Michael, uh, planning is in the news right now, with the government about to announce changes to the present system to get Britain building. And uh, do you think these will be enough to do so? Um, yes, morning, morning, Peter. And um, as you say, a, a flurry of recent planning announcements and great to be talking to you about it today. I, I think the, the podium messaging uh, during the Prime Minister's speech was pretty clear, wasn't it? Build, build, build. But only time will tell, I think, whether the, his package of, slightly eclectic package of, of planning um, measures will support increased level of construction. I think it's it's great that we're talking about planning um, and the role that that planning can have um, to support and, and shape the economic recovery. The current planning system is undoubted, undoubtedly complex. Um, we have a, a myriad of, of policies. Um, it is in parts flexible, but in other parts quite slow and bureaucratic at times and I think these temporary measures that we're seeing from from government and I think they are largely temporary um, measures are designed to to deregulate the system and provide a, a stimulus but the devil will be in the detail all permitted development rights have limitations um, we don't know what the limitations on these rights will be yet, and we need to we need to see the legal drafting and the regulations and and work with government so that they hopefully have the the desired effect. But I think the other thing that was clear from the prime minister's speech this week is that the government has much bigger plans for for planning. There's been um, a lot of talk about zoning recently, something um, which I think um, will take time and it is, is complex to, to essentially rewrite the UK planning system. But I, I hope when we see the policy paper next month that we can have a national debate about the shape of the planning system that we want and also the culture of the planning system that we want. So I think there are, there are reasons for um, cautious optimism, um, Peter, that planning reforms could really uh, provide a major boost of construction activity in this country and we need to think really carefully about the way we deliver um, major housing and economic led regen in the UK which has been painfully slow at times. But of, of all the sectors retail is probably the, the worst hit so uh, what does that need to uh, do if it is to recover? Well, I, I think um, in retail we're seeing uh, five or, or you know, even ten year trends happening in a year. The rise of uh, e-commerce is, is accelerating these trends and at, at British Land we think that the amount of physical retail will decline by um, up to as much as a third. But we will see the best retail, whether that's um, high streets, or town centres, um, or retail parks, or, or shopping centres will revive, and we're supporting um, retailers through through rent holidays and through deferrals um, where those retailers are struggling because of the impacts of of COVID nineteen um, to make sure that they do revive. But also, I think we need to accept and we need to prepare for there there will be a very significant um, repositioning and repurposing of, of retail. And I, I think that's planning will be absolutely instrumental um, to repurposing retail. And if you, you take high streets and town centres, I think we need much more planning flexibility to be able to provide and move easily between retail uses, but also leisure, um, office, workspace, culture, 
uh, community, education, healthcare, all of these uses could, um, could form part of a vibrant town centres. I think we could see uses um, concurrently um, so that buildings are used uh, more intensively, so that we, we drive footfall, um, we increase trading hours and, and have vibrant um, daytime and, and evening economies. Um, and planning flexibility, I think, will help us to do that. I also think that um, whilst there is rightly a huge focus on town centres, that um, the same um, flexible planning regime could be applied out of town to retail parks as well. Um, where there's retail uh, vacancy out of town, we could have greater flexibility to move to residential or other employment generating uses like logistics. And we're seeing a huge shift uh, in the way um, that retailers fulfill orders and a huge demand for last mile delivery. So we can make the best use of brownfield land and existing highways capacity out of town as, as well as focusing on town centres. So do you suggest we, we get rid of use class orders altogether as a part of the planning system? Um, I, not altogether, Peter, but I think a, um, a review of the use classes order is, is long overdue. And I, I think particularly retail use classes, which are, are no longer fit for purpose. Um, they don't reflect the way we live and, and shop um, and the rise of um, experiential uh, retail and, and showroom um, retail. But also I would go further. Um, and I think you could have a single town centre use class that covered all of those uses that I've just talked about. I don't see why um, in town centres and on, on the ground floor of commercial buildings actually, why you shouldn't be able to move between, more freely between retail, office, culture, community, education, healthcare, which um, will be increasingly important to, to drive footfall and reduce the burden on, on planning authorities. So you've just uh, moved back into your office, at least for a part of the week. Uh, so do you think you'll be working from home more than you did before? And what do you think uh, more home working is likely to be the impact uh, on the central London office market? Um, yeah, that's, that's a great question, Peter. And um, one we, I think we, we've asked ourselves um, a lot over the last few weeks and months at British Land. Um, I, I take the first part of your question um, first. I, I haven't quite um, moved back into my office. Um, I'm talking to you from home today, as you can probably tell by the wallpaper. Um, but I, I have I have visited my my office um, twice this week. I'm intending to work a couple of days uh, in the office and and three days a week from home in the in the near term. And um, it was great to be back. It was um, it was it was great to see my colleagues. And I realised I'd I'd missed that connection and I I'd missed those kind of serendipitous conversations that happen in the kitchen and um, in the corridor and by your desk um, at work that are really hard to, to have over you know teams or, or zoom or whatever it is that um, that we're using and um, having said that I think I I will work from home more often I didn't work from home a lot um, prior to the crisis I think um, the technology has been great as an experiment. It's worked. We've proved we can all work um, productively from home. And, you know, I found home can be quiet. It can be um, very productive. You know, I don't think it makes a, a huge amount of sense to commute for an hour to process emails and, and miss your kid's bedtime. But so there are times and tasks that, I think I can, I can, and I will do from home. But equally, you know, you want to go to the office to collaborate, um, to create, um, to learn from smart people. And, and if I think about, you know, my career, um, you know, just that osmosis of learning from people in the office has been a, a huge influence, and that's hard to recreate from home. I think, you know, we talk a lot about the culture of, of 
businesses and that camaraderie. And I think one of the reasons that home working has been so successful is because people and teams and businesses have built up culture and camaraderie in the office. So to turn to the second part of your question, I think for, for British Land as, a, um, as an office developer, it's absolutely imperative that we, we learn from lockdown um, and we are learning from, from lockdown. And we think people will, um, will require still, and um, people will still require offices um, is the first thing we've seen from our customers. There is a, um, a great desire to be, um, to be back in, in the office for those, those reasons that I talked about, collaboration and um, culture and learning and, and socialising. But when people go back, they may require um, more, more flexible space. I think we're going to see a, a flight to quality um, of space. And at British Land, we, um, with the buildings where we're building at Broadgate now, 100 Liverpool Street, which completes um, later this year, our recently completed refurb at One Finsbury Avenue, um, our pipeline of buildings at Broadgate and a Canada Water and a, across London, we feel really well placed um, to respond to that flight to quality. And also this much greater focus that we're going to see on on well-being, um, and on um, the, the health and well-being of offices um, and the sustainability of offices. So, um, yeah, I think we, we feel well placed to respond to the challenge, Peter. Well, I'm very uh, glad to hear you being so optimistic, Michael. And uh, well, thank you very much for your comments and your points. And I uh, look forward to uh, meeting you up in Broadgate or Regent's Place sometime soon. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to see you, Peter. Thanks for having me on.